This past year has been a roller coaster for Ryan Garcia, and he's undergone some very worrying changes. The most noticeable of these is the change in his physical appearance. In only the last few months, he's gone from looking like this to looking like this. His face has taken on a puffy, bloated appearance that's completely different from the angular features he used to have. You might think these photos were just taken from a bad angle, but if you look at any recent interview with Garcia, side by side with one from just a few months earlier, you can see just how much he's changed. Naturally, your first thought might be that he simply gained weight, since a lot of people do store excess body fat on their face. But on closer inspection, it seems like something else is going on. While significant fluctuations in weight are common in combat sports, we've never seen Ryan look like this in his seven year long career. Even in the lead up to his fight against Oscar Duarte in December 2023, when he weighed in at the heaviest he's ever been for a fight, he looked completely normal. Then, when you consider the fact that he's just one month out from arguably the biggest fight of his career, it seems even less likely that he's let his weight get out of control. The change in Ryan's appearance isn't the only difference we've seen in him. His voice is completely transformed, going from medium or high-pitched to deep and raspy. Sometimes it genuinely sounds like he's been smoking 20 a day, and that's not an exaggeration. On top of this, he's also developed a strange twitch, which he never had in the past. So what exactly has happened to Ryan, and how has he changed so much in such a short space of time? Ryan Garcia is one of the most recognizable faces in modern day boxing. He's known for his lightning fast hand speed and explosiveness, and these attributes have helped him climb the ranks as a pro. Of his 24 wins, 20 of them have come by way of knockouts, and this follows on from an excellent amateur career where he achieved the record of 215 wins and 15 losses. While very successful in the ring, he's also found a lot of success outside of it. Unlike most of his peers, Ryan embraced social media very early on in his career, and it paid off. He's amassed over 10 million followers on Instagram and almost 6 million on TikTok, making him well known to far more than just boxing fans. Combine this with his good looks and charm, and by many, he's considered to have it all. The biggest test in Ryan's career so far came in April 2023, when he fought Javante Tank Davis. Going into the bout, both guys had undefeated records, with Garcia at 23-0 and Davis at 28-0, so a lot was on the line. This was genuinely refreshing to see, as it's becoming more and more rare in boxing to see fights made between two fighters with perfect records, especially when they're in or close to their prime. But Ryan was very keen to make it happen. With his superior resume, Javante's camp was the A-side for the fight, and they put forward a lot of stipulations. One was that Davis was to have a one-sided rematch clause that only he could exercise if Garcia beat him. Another was that the fight would take place at a catch weight of 136 pounds with a 10 pounds rehydration clause, something that heavily favored Davis, who is a naturally smaller man. Ryan conceded to both these demands as well as others. During this whole journey, I definitely put boxing first and the fans first because I had to accept a lot of stipulations. They know it, you know, going down on weight, rehydration clause. I don't want to bring up too much, but those are the little things that I said to myself, you know what, if I pin myself first, I should say no, but my heart don't let me. I got the character of a champion and my power comes from within and from above. Garcia won the respect of a lot of boxing fans in doing this, but it came at a cost. Going into the fight, he looked depleted and clearly not in peak physical condition. This certainly affected his performance. However, I doubt it would have changed the outcome. Javante simply outclassed him, exposing serious weaknesses in his defense that led to an early knockdown in the second round. From there, Davis completely outboxed Garcia, working his body and routinely slipping his signature left hook. Then in the seventh, Javante landed a crippling liver shot that forced Garcia to take a knee. Ryan was wasn't able to make it back to his feet before the end of the referee's 10 count, so the fight ended there, with Davis winning by knockout. This was a tough pill to swallow for Ryan, who judging from everything he was saying before the fight, truly believed he was going to win, but he handled his defeat with grace. How close did you get up, yo, how close did you come to getting up? How close did you uh, uh, I was close to getting up for sure. Uh, uh, I mean, I ain't got no excuses, I just couldn't get up. However bad he was feeling at that moment, it can't have lasted, because he walked away from the fight with the biggest payday of his entire career. The bout sold over 1.2 million pay-per-views, and Garcia took home a whopping $30 million. If there's any way to get over a tough loss, that's it. Following his defeat, things started to fall apart in Ryan's camp. Issues arose between Garcia and his promoters at Golden Boy Promotions, former boxers Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. In the post-fight press conference of his fight with Davis, neither of them showed up, which raised a lot of eyebrows. Then, in the weeks following, they made no effort to reach out and contact Ryan at all. Ryan saw this as a betrayal from his team and felt like he was abandoned when he needed them most. 
A win, I wouldn't have got to see it. A loss, I seen everybody leave me, and then I just got to see who was really there for me. After the fight, nobody was there for me. Like, my team, but just didn't come to the press conference. They weren't trying to look out for me after the fight. Oscar posted a video trying to explain why they weren't there for the post-fight press conference. First of all, Bernard Hopkins was accused during the weigh-in of having testosterone cream on his hands and touching Gervonta Davis when he only wanted to help him because he was going to fall off the off the stage. PBC, Gervonta's promoter, banned him from everything. He couldn't get inside the ring. He couldn't do anything during the promotion. As for myself, my security team told me, boss, we got to get the fuck out of here because I received death threats. You guys don't know this. I received death threats throughout the whole week and they just said it was simply too dangerous. So we got out of there. Fans weren't buying this story with one commenting, this is BS. Had Ryan won, they 1000% would have been there. The situation escalated in early June 2023 when Ryan attempted to terminate his contract with Golden Boy Promotions. His team cited some contradictions in the contract which they believe invalidate it and they tried using this to cut ties with the company. This marked the second time in three years that Golden Boy Promotions found itself in legal trouble with its top star. As in 2020, Canelo Alvarez sued them to get out of his contract. Unfortunately for Ryan, it didn't go as smoothly for him as it did for Canelo because Golden Boy filed a lawsuit against him in retaliation. Since this, the two camps have been in a legal battle and their feud has been very public. In December 2023, Garcia had his first fight back since his loss to Davis. His opponent was Oscar Duarte, who was also represented by Golden Boy Promotions. From interviews prior to the fight, you could tell that De La Hoya and Hopkins wanted Duarte to beat Garcia. In one interview, Bernard was asked whether Ryan should fight the winner of Haney Progre after Duarte. Do you think Ryan Garcia should fight the winner of that fight? I think Ryan Garcia should win this fight and I will see how he look in this fight to make my personal decision whether he should fight again. Ryan really didn't like what Bernard said here and during the final press conference before the fight, he called him out. You know, one thing that's been on my heart is uh, the statements that Bernard made where he'll decide if I'm going to finish or if I should continue boxing after this fight. He don't, he, he don't decide that. My coach does, my team does, everybody that, you know, grinds with me day in and day out, that's who decides and ultimately God decides, not him. Nobody was uh, telling him when to stop boxing. You know, he stopped boxing at what, 45, so kudos to him, but he don't determine that. Oscar's saying that, you know, we, we misinterpret, uh, you know, what they say. It's plain English. <laughs> I, I didn't hear anybody speaking any language I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, it's very clear to me that, you know, they're backing this guy to beat me just like they thought Duno was going to beat me. He was the next Filipino star. They saying he's the next Mexican star. It was a bold move to call out his promoters while they were right there with him on stage. And from the facial expressions Oscar was making, you could tell he was uncomfortable. Ryan went on to stick it to them by knocking out Duarte in the eighth round of their fight. He showed noticeable improvements from his fight with Davis and it looked like things were back on the right track for him. However, since then, everything has gone downhill. On January 6th, 2024, Ryan posted on Instagram announcing the birth of his first son with wife Andrea Selena. Then within a couple hours, he made another Instagram post, which he since deleted, telling his followers that he and his wife have broken up. He said, as I step into a new chapter in my life, it's with a heavy heart to share that Drea and I have decided to divorce. While this decision marks the end of our marriage, it's important to emphasize that our relationship as co-parents remains our top priority. Later that month, Ryan made an appearance on the PBD podcast. This was one of the first interviews he did following his fight with Duarte, and there was a very clear difference in his appearance. His face looked red and puffy, totally lacking the definition he normally has around the jaw and cheeks. Not only that, but he developed some sort of twitch which could be seen throughout the entire episode. This was already quite strange, but perhaps the most obvious sign that something was wrong was the change in his voice. If you compare how he sounds in this interview with one from just a few months earlier, the difference is shocking. I want to be one of the best in the sport. I want to be the best in the sport and get a title. So that's my main goal. I think me, that's funny. I, talk, I think I talk to Randy Mahomes more than I do Patrick. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Something like weight gain could explain the change in his face, but it can't explain the twitch or deepening of his voice. So some people in the comments were speculating that the cause is drug or alcohol abuse. Another thing that stood out about the interview was the way Ryan was behaving. Normally during podcast appearances, he's engaged and respectful, but here he kept interrupting the hosts and using his phone. In another interview he did the same day, he was using a face roller throughout, which was just bizarre. And his twitching was even worse than it was on the PBD podcast. On February 9th, it was confirmed that Ryan would be fighting Devin Haney on April 20th. These two have been rivals since their days as amateurs where they fought six times, each taking away three wins. Haney is still undefeated and is arguably an even greater challenge than Javante Davis. With a huge fight like this on the horizon, you'd think Garcia would be super focused and dialed in, but it's been the total opposite. He's been starting beef with anyone and everyone. Shortly after the fight announcement, he got into a heated back and forth on Twitter with influencer Bryce Hall. Bryce was trained by Ryan's dad for a boxing match back in 2021 and Ryan tweeted at him saying he owes his dad money and that they've been trying to take him to court. Bryce responded saying, I know Ryan Garcia has a huge gambling problem, especially at the high stakes poker tables in LA. So with that being said, he wanted to start a Twitter beef for over 10k I was trying to send him over a year ago. Doesn't really make up for the millions he's losing playing cards, but I guess we can start somewhere. Ryan's a little crybaby twat complaining about 10k trying to sue me for it. Brother, you think I don't have 10k to just send you right now? At Ryan Garcia, respond to my private message and we can handle it instead of using Twitter as a therapy session. From there, they continue to hurl insults at each other, but it's not clear from the tweets whether Bryce ended up paying Ryan the 10k. Many people wanted to know more about the gambling problem Bryce accused Ryan of having. And just a couple weeks later, he made an appearance on a podcast where he elaborated on it. No, this is about Ryan Garcia. So he's trying oh. to get the ten thousand, oh. the ten thousand dollars from me. <laughs> but I know about the poker games that he's losing millions of dollars at <laughs> because I've played at some of those games, and they tell me how much of a, like a fucking fish he is. Basically, he just right. throws money. He's like an idiot. So hey, I will, I will verify that by Bryce. I'm, I've, I've got a lot of buddies at the top level of the poker games that run through Cali and Vegas. And, and he's definitely a fucking fish that loses a lot of oh, money at the lot. poker table. Since Bryce made these accusations, Ryan's come out saying he's a billionaire and that he plans to share the story of how he made all his money. This is hard to believe, especially given that on the same day he tweeted this, he posted an Instagram video trying to sell a Gucci bag to his followers. One of three Gucci bag in the world. Yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm gonna put my own boxing gloves, my own boxing gloves, I'm gonna sign them, ones that I fought Oscar Dorte in, and I'm gonna sign my Luke Campbell boxing shorts in them, and I'm gonna give you tickets to the fight and fly you first class to my fight from wherever you are. The bag is gonna be $350,000. If you're serious about buying it, let me know. Thank you. I can't imagine a billionaire would be doing this. Following on from Bryce, Ryan got at Shia LaBeouf after a video emerged in which he criticized him. I don't like that Ryan guy. At all. Ryan Garcia. Yeah, I hate him. Yeah. Do you hate him? I don't hate him. I don't hate nobody. Did he I, quit I against him. Davis with a body shot? One, he quit, but also I heard a story about his girl got pregnant, gave birth, and then he divorced her the next day. And I thought, oh, you got oh, really? no you garbage. Yeah. Even if you feel that way, dog, wait a minute. She yeah. just got out of the hospital room. You know what I mean? And then he's like tweeting about it, like a little, just. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ryan responded saying, imagine me beating Shia LaBeouf's ass. I'ma really transform him into pudding. You don't know me clown, how the heck you hate me? You can't rap either, you aren't like that. Shortly after this, Ryan made an appearance on Ariel Helwani's podcast. At this point, he really didn't look well as his Twitch had become completely uncontrollable. During the podcast, he called out MMA fighter Sean O'Malley, who's the current UFC bantamweight champion. Over the weekend as well, there were a lot of tweets from you. One was about Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh yeah, bring that motherfucker on. <laughs> I'll beat his ass in MMA, guaranteed. In MMA? Yeah, I'm a natural, you don't understand. I'm a natural in wrestler. I just beat my security that's a wrestler. I beat him. I'm strong and I got crazy conditioning. So most people in your position would want him to come over to boxing. No, but I want, that's already been done. Yeah. I know I'm gonna knock him out in boxing. That's not even fair. What is fair is to test myself in MMA because I know if I put my mind to it and I trained every day and I had Nate helping me, even Alex Pereira, all of them, and I really locked in, he will not beat me. I will come with everything I have and I would destroy Sean O'Malley. 
He claimed to have texted Dana White to try to arrange the fight, but didn't get a response. It doesn't make sense why Ryan's even pursuing this because there's a lot more money in boxing than MMA, and he's far more likely to win there. The skill set required for MMA is so much more broad than for boxing, so you can bet that O'Malley would eat him alive in the cage. After the call out, Sean and his coach responded with a skit, mocking Ryan and Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya has a history of drug use, and with Ryan's recent erratic behavior, they suggested he's followed in his footsteps. Ryan, we need money. We're in debt from betting, brother. Oscar, I need to get fuck shit for showing up, honestly. You could fight MMA, you could beat whoever you want, you could beat John Jones. I seriously think I could wrestle. Wrestle your security guard, show him, prove him. You're an athlete, you're a natural. You can do whatever, brother. Let's get it on, hold on. <sighs> fuck, I'll fight Dana. Fuck <laughs> Dana, <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa! Let's go on aerial show, brother. Since this, O'Malley's also made an appearance on the PBD podcast and he spoke about the situation with Ryan. Zero to knockout oh, or, or submission. How long do you think you would need to get him done? In UFC, not boxing, in UFC. So I think the fastest way to victory then would be to probably choke him. I probably could choke him in a couple, like a couple minutes. Oh, you would need two minutes. So you think it'd be a two minute thing? <sighs> could be. That's being humble. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sean's a genius. I don't know. It's, it's hard to Yo. say. It doesn't sound like anyone in that room thinks Ryan stands a chance. With all the different beef he's been starting, fans have shown concern that Ryan's not taking his fight with Devin Haney seriously. There have been questions raised about his health and mental state, as people have noticed the changes in both his appearance and behavior. The first press conference for their fight took place on February 27th, and Ryan tried using the opportunity to silence any doubt that he's not ready for the fight. When I first came into the game, I just wanted to make a bunch of money, and then I did that. But now I want to go for the legacy, I want to go for the bouts, Devin's in the way, you know, I'm on my vengeance arc. I'm ready to get back in blood and everything. So I'm coming straight for his neck. I promise you that. I promise you, I'm coming straight for you. It's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be ugly. I'm talking about ugly. You're gonna need a help him, I swear. You're gonna have three opportunities up, to save him. Up, it's gonna be bad. He was talking a big talk and he probably managed to convince some people. But after the conference, Haney did an interview where he said Ryan was drunk. Ryan was at the motherfucking press conference, drunk as a skunk, but, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, he, he get it together before April 20th. He was then asked what he thinks about Ryan feuding with guys like Sean O'Malley. What do you think about um, Ryan talking about fighting UFC fighters, pop singers? He's been saying a lot of things on social media and other fighters. What do you think about that? Still Ryan up. is an alcoholic. He drink a lot. So he, we don't know which Ryan we're going to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know. So we don't know if he's, he might be off of you know, a bottle of Casamigos when we're talking about. Just a day after this, Ryan appeared on a Twitter space where he admitted to something he shouldn't have. First off, how you doing, bro? How's training going? Everything Amazing, going? bro. Looking good. <laughs> training good. I'm laughing because... I'm uh, high as like This was bad, but it all got a lot worse during their second press conference on February 29th. You know, I'm confident no matter what, but yeah. Devin. Say it louder, please. Devin, we uh, motherfucker need some 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 coke to talk. He needs some alcohol to talk. This fuck motherfucker sound dumb as fuck. No, I'm on like 20 black coffees, no cap, all black coffees. <laughs> That's what gets me going. Cool. It, it looks like I'm a coke because I. Never mind. Devin. I don't even look that. Yeah, you're right. I don't even. Yeah, do I need to explain myself? Probably not. Huh? You were with me 24/7. Have you ever seen me do cocaine? Never in your life, huh? I love you. What happened? Ever. Fuck out of here, motherfucker. Hey, what if I came up there and I beat the fuck out of you, motherfucker? I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't do it. Go do it. You ain't gonna do shit. Sit your little ass down. Devin was really getting under Ryan's skin, leading him to take the stage and address all the rumors and accusations head on. I want to invite the Holy Spirit to come into this room and fill this room with peace and, and, and just to be really direct. What the fuck happens to your voice? So at the end of the day, I've been screaming for these promos, but I'm not even gonna react. At the end of the day, you know, I want to clarify some Stop things. Stop the coke, nigga! It's fucking up your voice. I, I, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to clarify some things. I want to clarify some things. I don't do cocaine. I would do, I would do a live drug test. What do you do? I would do a what live do do? drug test. What I, do you do? I drink and I smoke weed, and so has the majority of this room. You finally got somebody raising your hand saying, I'm real. I'm like this. I do drink. I do smoke. Now what? It's okay. 
Guess what? We all have our flaws and we all evolve as people. Look at, I'm 25 years old. You gotta remember the weight of the world sometimes feels like it's on my shoulders. You know, you know, you, you, I don't know how many people have been 25 years old and made $100 million in their life and can do whatever they want. I wanna see what you would do in my shoes. Probably a lot more than some weed. <laughs> Since this press conference, the situation with Ryan has gotten much, much worse. Things have escalated far beyond accusations of drug use and Garcia might be in some serious trouble. Don't miss my next video to find out everything that's going on.